times, well over five bucks a gallon nationally. How could this be? It really was a mystery. It violated the most basic rules of economics. But now, thanks to a new report in Reuters, we know why. It turns out the oil being released isn't for us. It's going to India and China. According to Reuters, and we're quoting, more than five million barrels of oil that were part of a historic U.S. emergency reserve release to lower domestic fuel prices were exported to Europe and Asia last month. The piece continues, quote, cargoes of SPR crude, oil from our reserves, were also headed to the Netherlands and to a Reliance refinery in India, an industry source said. A third cargo, buckle your seatbelt, headed to China. To China. So as gas prices set records in this country, as American citizens who are born here and vote and pay taxes cannot afford to fuel their own cars, the Biden administration is selling off our emergency oil reserves to China. That's not an indictable offense. It's certainly an impeachable one. And they should impeach him for that. Are they going to sell the redwood forest to China next? How about the water rights to the Great Lakes? That's the equivalent of what he just did. Now, if you're keeping track, they didn't even need it. China and India already have access to very cheap oil from Russia. Why? Thanks to the Biden administration's a lunatic ban on Russian oil imports. For moral reasons, it was a moral victory. The people of Ukraine, remember that? Zelensky. He was George Washington, said George W. Bush. You wouldn't know George Washington if he got in the shower with him. According to customs data, China spent $19 billion on Russia oil, gas, and coal earlier this year. That's double the amount they spent over the same period last year. India spent $5 billion on Russian oil. That's up five times from what they spent a year ago. So we just made Russia a ton of money. That's why the ruble is so strong as the dollar is getting weaker. Russia has raked in $13 billion in additional revenue from India and China compared to the same period last year. Following all this? This is how we're punishing our enemies? By selling off? our own most valuable assets and watching Russia and India and, my God, China get richer? Now, on top of all of that cheap Russian oil, China is getting petroleum from our emergency petroleum reserves. The crude, by the way, in the SPR is the best crude that we have. It's called medium sour crude. It's the easiest to process. And we're giving it away to a government whose whole goal is to displace us on the global stage and crush us. The Chinese will be cruel masters when they run the world. They're not like us at all. By the way, that country, China, also happens to be a longtime business partner of the Biden family. Now, a functioning Congress would investigate this immediately. The last president was impeached for, for what? Having a phone call with some corrupt Ukrainian politician? <laughs> but no, they can't be bothered. They're still yelping about January 6th. It was an insurrection. They're trying to ban your hunting rifle. So the White House is able to ignore the whole thing. Here's Joe Biden's glass ceiling breaking publicist just yesterday. There's a Reuters report um, out this morning that says that more than 5 million barrels of oil that were released from the emergency of oil reserves were exported to Europe and Asia last month. And some of it reportedly was actually heading to China. Uh, is the administration aware of those reports? And um, you know, does, it, does the president mind that some of this oil that was meant to uh, ease pain for consumers is headed overseas? I have not seen that report, so I would honestly have to go look into it and see what what the truth is in that in that uh, statement that you just laid out and see exactly what's happening. I, I just have not seen that report. How can someone that dumb be that arrogant? Or is there actually a connection between dumbness and arrogance? Probably so. But if someone asks you in the White House briefing, oh, by the way, is the U.S. government selling our strategic petroleum reserve to our main enemy in the middle of a gas shortage, you probably should have an answer or at least seem embarrassed that you don't. It's a very simple question. Why does customs data show that we are sending millions of barrels of oil to China? Huh? It's been 24 hours since that briefing. We still don't have an answer. And of course, that tells you what's really going on here. This is not a mistake. It's intentional. As if to make that as obvious as possible, over the weekend, Joe Biden's communications staff tweeted this out under his name. Quote, my message to the companies running gas stations and setting prices at the pump is simple. This is a time of war and global peril. Bring down the price you are charging at the pump to reflect the cost you're paying for the product and do it now. What is like nationalizing the gas stations? So he's attacking small businesses 
in the United States, running a gas station is not a profitable gig. It's not like running Apple or being a private equity baron or doing any of the things that Joe Biden's donors do. It's not like being Nancy Pelosi who somehow got super rich. How'd that happen? No, it's a small business. So he's blaming them as he sells our national assets to our enemies. So no one with a basic understanding of economics can pretend to justify what that tweet says. It's just too stupid. Even CNN wouldn't swallow it. Watch. Christine, it's like there's a bad smell in the room and the president is just pointing to the dog. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but look, he, this is a real problem for the White House because people put gas in their car all the time and they're feeling, feeling this pain. They say there's so many factors at play. It's not like you can just lower the price of gas, you know, with waving a, a magic wand. And the president was talking about the people who sell the gas. The 145,000 gas stations are independently owned. They're small businesses, essentially. And um, they have higher margins on their candy bars that they sell than they do on their gas. Well, exactly. And that's literally true. They make more on a Snickers bar on a percentage basis than they do from a gallon of diesel fuel. But we may be blaming the wrong people here. Karine Jean-Pierre? <laughs> Please. She has no idea what's actually going on. She just reads from the binder, barely read, whatever. They have to workshop sound bites like Putin's price hike. All right. They're not making any decisions. The people who are making decisions are former Obama staffers like Brian Deese. He runs the National Economic Council. He's Joe Biden's top economic advisor. You can thank him. We should put his picture on the screen more often. On Thursday, he told us accidentally maybe what's actually going on, why the Biden administration is deliberately sabotaging the United States by crushing our energy supply for the benefit of China. Watch this. Well, what do you say to those families who say, listen, we can't afford to pay 4.85 a gallon for months, if not years. This is just not sustainable. Well, what you heard from the president today was a clear articulation of the stakes. This is about the future of the liberal world order and we have to stand firm. <laughs> yeah, we've got to stand firm. <laughs> the liberal world order. How's that working for you, by the way? Is there anybody who is happier because of it, except for people like that? No. But they don't care, because you will own nothing and be happy. What they didn't tell you was that China will own everything, including our oil supply. Wait till they come for the Great Lakes. Tim Stewart is the president of the U.S. Gas and Oil Association. We're honored to be joined by him tonight. Tim, thanks so much uh, for coming on. So. You know, to, to someone who's not in the business, as you are selling off an asset like this and allowing it to be sold to China seems like criminal, honestly. You, you know, Tucker, you articulate it better than just about anybody. Uh, the, the question, I think, to, to answer that question, we have to ask ourselves, how did we get here in the first place? Yes. How did we replace one bad policy with another bad policy? How did we go from being... The, the world's energy superpower being number one in oil and gas and coal and, and, and geothermal and second in wind and solar to shaking the tin cup to the Saudis and, and not even being able to track where, where our strategic petroleum reserve releases end up. It's, it's really quite, it's, it's quite disconcerting, isn't it? I, I would say it's really important to know that the, the exploration production companies were not supportive of the strategic petroleum reserve release. Why didn't we just? Why weren't we allowed just to open up the spigot of what we're already doing versus shutting that off and, and, and tapping into the, the nation's credit card? It really is. It's quite frustrating. I got to be honest. I've talked to uh, most of the people who run the oil and gas companies. And they all act like you know they're selling cigarettes to kids. They're always a little bit embarrassed. Oh, it's oil and gas, but really we're about green energy. Why don't they step up in public and say, without us, this is an impoverished country. This is Central Africa. You need us in order to stay solvent, and like make some noise and fight back. Well, we, and we're trying to, you know, that, that tweet that the president sent out on, on Saturday was, uh, we had a response where, you know how it is, you know, Twitter is sort of an exercise in futility. There are thousands and thousands of people who think that they're experts in oil and gas because they, re they retweet something that some celebrity does. And, and so we've avoided it. But we, we saw that tweet come across and, and it just sort of struck a nerve. And so we, so we did our best to kind of call, call the BS on, on the White House and say, look, somebody's got to go back and look at economics here. Yeah, I mean, we, I mean, it is over if we get rid of fossil fuels. That's just true. And I wish we could stop lying about it. Tim Stewart, I appreciate your coming on tonight. Thank you. Thank, thanks for having me on. So you took biology so you know that only women can get pregnant. And that used to be a source of pride for women because like that perpetuates the species. But saying that out loud is now not allowed. 
The largest newspaper in America just demoted, demoted one of their employees for saying it. We're going to talk to him in just a moment. Plus, we're going to continue tonight because it's our duty to defend our new hero, Tierra Mack. She's a state senator from Rhode Island and an amazing upside-down twerker. Democrats seem to be ignoring her. That seems racist, just being honest. We'll revisit that, the Tierra Mack saga, next.